Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. We're back. It's 12 after the hour. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I'm Jim Blassingame. You're listening to the Small Business Advocate Show, and I'm glad you're here. You know, folks, uh, one of the things that the new technologies is providing, are providing, uh, is, is uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity to do a lot of things we never were able to do before, especially with the, in the area of, of information. And sometimes the things that we're capable of doing, that we have the capability to do, sometimes that infringes on other people's ownership. Remember Napster? Remember when we had all the, that whole issue? Well, this, this issue of, of intellectual property, protecting it, or my, and, and, and my freedom to wander around and do what I want to on the Internet, those two things have collided. And, uh, and, and they're, they're, the big debate, the current battle is in Washington right now, and over, over this, uh, this piracy issue, the intellectual property piracy issue, and uh, it's called. The, there's there's some laws that are being considered in Congress right now, and uh, they're being debated. And and I've got somebody here with us right now who can explain all this and explain why yesterday when you went to Wikipedia you didn't get the services you used to, or when you went to Google you saw a digital piece of tape over their brand. And uh, his name is Steve Delbianco. You know him well. He's been here for for 12 years with us. He's uh, executive director of NetChoice and uh, vice president of the Association for Competitive Technologies. He's been tracking the Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA, and that's what this was all about uh, yesterday. Steve Delbianco, welcome back to the show. Hey, Jim. Thanks. It's uh, great that you're covering this topic. It could not be more timely given the events of yesterday and all the controversy swirling around. Here in Washington, D.C., I've been at conferences for the past two days, and I have two more today. And the whole topic is what do we do about piracy? Well, that's right. And, and of course, that there, therein lies the, the issue. And, see, I remember you and Jonathan, you and the, your president of, of ACT, uh, Association for Competitive Technology, both of you warned us ten years ago at least that all this new capability was going to create uh, issues on both sides of, uh, you know, on, on the usage side and on the ownership side, and that's where we are right now, isn't it? It is, Jim, and a lot of it's enabled because of user-generated content, what people call the Web 2.0. Right. was when we moved from a web that was managed by publishers, let's say Jim Blasingame, right. ask Jim, you're a publisher, mm-hmm. and then it moved to users themselves posting their own stuff on the Internet, posting mm-hmm. their own stuff in social networks, Mm-hmm. on bulletin boards, places like Flickr, BitLocker, things that the folks can put their own content up, but they can also put content up that belongs to somebody else. Right. And that kind of uh, music, movies, TV shows, books, software, games. And in the case of uh, another aspect of counterfeiting, folks can make counterfeit goods, counterfeit drugs, counterfeit purses, mm-hmm. and advertise them as if they're authentic Tiffany's or authentic mm-hmm. drugs. Mm-hmm and uh, sell those. So counterfeits and trademark violations are both involved, and so are copyright violations. So it's an expansive problem. And if you're the United States of America, well, the only thing that the USA has a trade surplus with every other nation on the planet is, uh, well, intellectual property. Intellectual property, right. We didn't export, right. If we didn't export and earn patent licenses on music, movies, software, games, TV shows, uh, we'd be a trade deficit on everything. So it's, so really, it's really important, important it's really important that we protect and my audience knows this, Steve, we talk a lot about intellectual property on this show or about the show, about the importance of recognizing that you own intellectual property every small business owner does to, to identify it, to secure it and to protect it and to fight for it and that's what that's what people in uh, in uh, uh, in Hollywood and the the big t- the big publishers, the movie producers, the music industry, they're all very concerned about losing the revenue, the income from their properties. It's basically the same thing as stealing inventory out of somebody's warehouse. The, but then on the it other side, go ahead. It is. And we had a uh, we had a member from Minnesota that had a design for a surgical stent that they used to open up uh, someone's arteries. You know, one of these little stainless steel stent screens. And uh, to make them cheaper, they were manufacturing them in China. Within, within three months of opening their Chinese manufacturing, their 
sales plummeted because, uh, well, someone at the factory walked down the street with the design and uh, mm-hmm. started making their own copies. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, um, how, how does an American company do something about um, illegal stuff that's happening overseas, right? right? It's almost impossible to get, in this case, the Chinese, or in many cases, Russian, law enforcement officials to take decisive action against the source of the problem. So that turn over 10 years, the trademark and copyright industry has turned to Congress and said, let's find other ways to block this stuff. And this is this is where read, things probably, this this is where things become diff, become get get difficult because Congress is not a, Congress is a blunt the that the the uh, the tools of Congress are all blunt instruments. Well, in this case, they're, they're doing their best, I think, to to uh, shave a little of the bluntness off, but they didn't do it in the right way. I think it's been a completely botched process, and it's responsible. So the, the insane amount of controversy that's swirling around this. So there are two, but, there, but Steve Holmes saying there are two people. I mean, there are two groups who are are are, are on this in this debate. As we said, one of the publishers, let's say the people who own the intellectual property, and the other people, the big the big uh, opponents of of these laws uh, of SOPA, for example, are the people who have large websites like like. Uh, uh, Google and and uh, and uh, 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 Wikipedia, etc., who who are part of the backbone of this of this uh, uh, the the uh, uh, UG, uh, user generated content UGC, right? Because right. because they yeah, are. And so, so, Go ahead. I was going to say that the reason that they're upset is that some of the mechanisms designed by these two pieces of legislation have profound impact on folks like. Google and YouTube. The the so enforcement the, market- the enforcement of on me, if I tried to upload something and abuse someone's copyright, someone's property, onto one of those conveyances, one of those utilities like Google or, or Wikipedia, the the enforcement of that would put they would put the enforcement on those companies and would basically shut them down, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't shut them down, and not only that, that's where that's where you would just gone beyond the realm of reality with these bills. Mm-hmm. But uh, we've got enough time here to walk through what the bills actually do, and what's wrong with them as well. Right. But, so, uh, so folks, they're, seen, they're they're good. They're well-meaning folks on both sides of this debate. Both of them have their own area to protect, and uh, and and that's what's being debated right now. This these two laws. One's one's in the Senate. It's already uh, it's a little farther along in the Senate. It's called PIPA, and the other one is in the House. It's called SOPA, and they're both about. Online privacy, uh, piracy, stopping online piracy, or de- dealing with, I should say, online piracy globally, not just in the United States. We're going to be right back with Steve Bianco, 20 after. I'm Jim Blassingham. Stay with me. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.